So leverage. As we discussed, in order to buy or sell one lot of euro dollar, you need 123,228 American dollars on your account, which is a lot of money. But even in order to trade with 0.1 lots, you need 12,000 American dollars. And in order to conduct the smallest transaction possible, a micro lot, 0.01 lots, you still need $1,200 on your account, which is a lot of money. And um, what, what happens if we can't afford uh, to have an account of that size or we're just not ready yet? We're practicing and we don't want to invest uh, that much money into the Forex market. How do we trade then? Well, this is where leverage comes into play. Uh, le the concept of leverage uh, has a lot of negative sentiment around it and people kind of um, think that it's uh, bad for you or dangerous, which is completely not true. And in this and the next tutorial, we will uh, disprove those fears. So what happens with leverage is your broker will actually lend you money in order to help you conduct uh, transactions on the Forex market. So in this picture, your money is on the right and the money the broker lends you is on the left. So let's have a look at a particular example. For instance, your balance is $500. Um, and you want to uh, conduct a transaction with the volume of 0 0.1 lots on the euro dollar currency pair. So you require 12,322 American dollars to conduct this transaction. Uh, obviously, your balance is insufficient at this stage. But with leverage, uh, if your leverage is a 1 to 100, then your broker will actually only require you to have 1% of that money. And the broker will lend you 99% of the required amount. So in this case, your broker will lend you $12,199. So you're borrowing 99% of this required amount. Uh, all you have to invest is uh, $123 uh, of your own money. So that is 1% of the transaction and that is much more affordable with your balance of $500. And in this case, you can now conduct this uh, transaction and um, participate in the forex market uh, either buying or selling the euro dollar um, so that's how leverage works but why would the broker do this why would the broker lend you money well we'll fi to find that out we have to talk about equity and margin and we'll do that in the next tutorial stop loss the concept of a stop loss is uh, very similar to a take profit but it is um, the other way around. It's the opposite, actually. So this uh, is our market movement. We enter into a buy order and we can embed a stop loss with our buy order. So it's it's an additional order in the, uh, the Forex market, but it is linked to our buy order. So basically what it means is if the price was ever to go and reach this red level or go below it, then the buy order has to be automatically closed. So that kind of saves you the trouble of monitoring the market and always worrying and checking if the price has gone down because you put this uh, rule into your buy order and uh, as soon as this condition is met, your buy order will be closed. So this is the market going down um, against us. So we were thinking it was gonna go up, but actually went down and then bam, price crosses our stop loss and the order gets closed. Of course, this uh, yields a certain loss on our account. So at this stage, you would ask why is a stop loss good and if it, it brings losses? Well, let's see what happens to the market uh, further down the track. It goes a bit up, it goes down, it goes up, and then it goes further down. So as you can see, there could have been potentially a much higher loss. Uh, say this one or even this one. So or even more than that. And uh, so it's better to um, control your losses and um, uh, exit exit uh, according to your trading strategy and exit on time rather than overweight and bear a very high loss. So smaller losses are much better than bigger losses and that's where your stop loss comes into play. Uh, it helps you uh, exit the market because what, what we're doing in trading is we won't always win in all of our trades. There will be loss losses inevitably there'll be losses on the account and it's all about managing those losses managing those risks and getting out of the market on time and that's where your stop loss will help you control the losses on your account it's a very important feature 
and uh, I highly recommend to always set a stop loss for um, any of your orders. Let's look at a stop loss for a sell order. So a sell order, we're anticipating a downward movement in the market. Um, we can set a stop loss which has to be above the entry price and that's because when we anticipate a downward movement we will uh, only lose if there's an upward movement. So let's see what happens in the market. The price goes against us and goes kind of in our favor but then it crosses our stop loss and unfortunately um, there's a small loss on the account. Um, let's see what happened to the price going forward, went up, went even further up. So if not for our stop loss, we could have closed the order there, or we could have even closed it there, and that would have been a much, much greater uh, loss on the account. So as you can see, stop losses, even though they bring losses to the account, but they are very, very uh, useful and very helpful in controlling your risks and managing uh, any potential losses on the account. And so just a final note to finish off, um, take profits and stop loss can and probably should be set together. Uh, as I said, I, all, I recommend always setting a stop loss and you can uh, combine it with a take profit if you like. You can set both of them and attach them to one order. Finally, a, a word of uh, caution. Uh, sometimes when uh, the market volatility is very, very high. For example, during um, uh, in market news, the broker, your broker, may not be able to execute your stop loss. It is a very rare uh, condition, but sometimes happens when there's just basically no price, no takers at your stop loss level or take profit level. And what will happen then is a, a, a massive slippage can happen. And um, even though you have a stop loss, it's not a 100% guarantee that the, uh, your order will be closed as stop loss. It's probably like a 90-95% guarantee, but sometimes it does happen that uh, an order can slip through. That's an inherent risk of the Forex market. Uh, you have to be aware of that, and that's why I uh, highly recommend having a look at my tutorials on uh, fundamental trading and uh, seeing how to kind of uh, understand when there's market movement so you don't uh, you avoid trading at those times. That's that's what I personally do. I kind of stay out of the market when I know there's going to be massive movement. Types of orders on the forex market. There are two main classes of orders on the forex market, and these are market orders and pending orders. And um, there are two sub uh, categories in the pending orders. These are stop orders and limit orders. And we'll have a look at all of them right now. So market orders. You're already familiar with these orders. These are the buy order and the sell order. Stop orders. So the first type of stop order that I'd like to introduce you to is the buy stop. So basically the buy stop is a pending type of order. What that means is that when you set a buy stop, you're not actually entering the market. You're setting a um, condition or a trigger or a future order. So you're saying if something were to happen, then I want to uh, uh, my terminal to enter the market automatically for me. So basically what this uh, in this case was happening is you're saying that if the price reaches this green line I want um, to enter the market uh, with a buy order. So let's see what how that happens. The price crosses the green line and that's exactly when your buy stop order turns into a buy order. So from that red cross onwards your buy stop order no longer exists. Now you have a buy order in the market. Um, sell stop order, very similar. So you're saying when the price crosses the green line, I want the market, I want to, to enter the market with a sell order. See, when that happens, your sell stop order uh, turns into a sell order instantly. Um, so what's the benefit of these buy stop and sell stop orders? Well, it's basically kind of um, saving you the effort of actually waiting for the price to get to that level and then entering the market. So if you uh, if you think that once the price crosses a certain um, uh, price, uh, a certain price level uh, or um, uh, support line, you think the price will keep going downwards, that's when you would want to set a sell stop order and um, catch that movement as soon as uh, it starts 
rather than having to sit around and wait for it to happen. Uh, the other thing is that if that doesn't happen, if the price, for example, in this uh, uh, image that we have in front of us, if the price were to keep going upwards, then um, you would never enter the market at a sell um, uh, with a sell order because the price wouldn't have crossed your this green line and wouldn't have triggered the sell order. So it's kind of a very convenient way to save your time and um, also check for specific conditions that you're looking for. Limit orders. Um, limit orders are similar to stop orders, but they may be a little bit more um, uh, complicated to uh, remember how they work. But we'll we'll get the hang of it. So a buy limit order is actually set below the market. So what you're anticipating is for the market to go down, touch your order, cross it, touch it, and then go back up. So you're kind of anticipating a recoil. You you think that, yes, the market will go up, but first it will go down. And uh, instead of entering right away, so you could have entered back here with a buy order, you want to get the most of this movement. So you want to actually let the market go down a bit, then enter with a buy order, and then you'll get this whole movement rather than getting only half of it. Once the uh, red cross happens over here, your buy limit is no longer a buy limit order. It transforms automatically into a buy order and you enter the market. That's the point when you enter the market, when the transaction occurs, the opening of the order. Sell limit. It's a very similar concept. You are anticipating an upward movement before a downward movement. So you think that the price will go up. It'll touch your sell limit order, trigger it, and then go down. Once again, you would do this if you're anticipating an overall downward trend, but you think there will first be some sort of retracement upwards. And instead of entering the market back over here with a sell order, you want to get the full movement, so you let the market go up first, touch your sell limit order, and then go down. So in this case, even if the market uh, price crosses your sell limit order, it will still be triggered as a um, sell order. So there's always these risks that the market will trigger your sell limit order, turn it into a sell order, and then keep going upwards. That can also happen, and your sell limit order will be triggered, and you will be in the market. And that's why uh, you should still use stop loss and take profits with your limit and uh, stop order. So even if a sell limit order, for example, you can tell it to set a stop loss and take profit. Of course, a stop loss would have to be above, take profit would have to be below. Um, and it works exactly the same way. Because remember, once uh, the order is triggered, it will either turn into a buy order or a sell order, and all the same rules apply as before. So uh, with your pending orders, you can also set stop loss and take profit levels, which will be triggered with the order, meaning that as soon as the order turns into a buy or sell order, the take profit and stop loss levels will be activated and they will be uh, protecting your order um, as uh, they would with any other market order. And to sum up, uh, we've got uh, our different order classes, different order types, and anticipated market movements. So the first two are the market orders. They're the buy and the sell. We For buy, we would enter into a buy when we anticipate an upward movement, into a sell when we anticipate a downward trend. Uh, and then uh, for pending orders, we would open a buy stop order when we think the market will go up, and then it will continue going up. So we kind of want to check this condition that uh, the market will cross some sort of uh, resistance line and uh, if that happens then only we want our buy stop order to become a buy order. Sell stop similar we uh, expect the market to go down and then keep going down. Buy limit we expect the market to go down first a little bit and then go up and sell limit we expect the market to go up and then go down. Um, so that's uh, the summary for order types. Don't forget to leave a review for this course if you haven't yet. I would really appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Until then, happy trading. Fundamental analysis. This type of 
market analysis is based on the belief or preemphasis that um, somewhere out there in the world there's information or knowledge that is not yet reflected in the market price. And uh, traders who use fundamental analysis believe that they can take advantage of that by entering into the right position, whether it's a buy or sell. Fundamental analysis involves things like um, reading and understanding news about uh, certain currencies, understanding the global economic uh, climate and uh, what uh, trends are happening there and what's, what's going on in the world that is actually affecting these currencies. Um, understanding uh, what's happening with resources because a lot of currencies actually um, correlate with resources or are very heavily dependent on uh, the supply and uh, demand for certain resources. One of the very a convenient ways of doing all of this is uh, through a uh, economic calendar, a calendar of economic events. It kind of uh, sums up all these things that are happening in the world for you. Of course, you have to do your own research, but it's a good starting point. And that's exactly what we'll be looking at uh, in the fundamental analysis section. I'll show you how to uh, properly read a Forex economic calendar, I'll show you a really good one, how to derive insights from it, and how to actually trade currencies based on the calendar of economic events. Also one more thing that you should keep in mind is that fundamental traders get very attached and very intimate with uh, the currency pairs they trade. So uh, a fundamental trader wouldn't be diverse across all of the currencies that you have in your terminal, but he would just pick one, two or three, like for example the British pound dollar, the British pound Australian dollar, uh, maybe the Euro British pound. And he would, because he would know a lot about the British pound, he could trade crosses of the British pound and also each one of them would be very unique because only certain events affect it, only certain types of resources affect it and being a fundamental trader you have to develop this and you will develop this kind of intimacy with the currency pairs you trade, you become very good at them. So on one hand you become like a, a uh, expert at those currency pairs that you trade but on the other hand a lot of the knowledge and skills that you develop in within those currency pairs are not applicable on other currency pairs. And that's kind of um, the two-sided coin of fundamental analysis. Technical analysis. This type of analysis is based purely on the belief that all available information in the world is already accounted for in the price. And therefore, all you need to do is analyze the charts. Because if all the information is already contained in the charts, then there's no need to analyze news, interest rates of countries, or even events like wars or um, very good harvests in different countries uh, that affect their, these currencies because you are assuming that all of that information is already reflected in the price at any given point in time. Traders who use technical analysis believe that prices move in trends and historical patterns tend to repeat themselves. And that is what a technical trader would take advantage of. Seeing a certain situation that he's seen before and uh, knowing how it uh, resolved in the past he can make a certain assumption of how it will resolve today and uh, based on that make predictions and enter the market. In a way technical trading is more precise and definitive than fundamental trading. Because in fundamental trading you have to use your own expertise, knowledge and assessment of the situation. You are expressing a subjective view on what will happen. Whereas in technical trading you are looking at patterns which happened in the past and based on that information deriving certain rules for your trading systems uh, to act in the present day. Therefore you're being objective. That's a very big advantage of uh, technical analysis. It removes psychology from trading. So you're not uh, worried about um, whether you made the right call or not because you have taken yourself out of the equation. Once you've set up these rules you, all you have to do is follow them strictly and precisely. If you've set them up correctly, you should make a profit with a very high chance of success. Uh, therefore, you're not worried and uh, staying um, up late at night or not being able to sleep. Another good advantage of technical trading is that in contrast to fundamental analysis, you don't have to develop an intimacy with the currency pair you're trading because charts they, of course, uh, different currency pairs will have uh, different styles of charts, different uh, types of movements. But as so long that you've learned how to analyze one, two, three, four different currency pairs, you will start seeing consistent themes across different currency pairs. 
and you will be able to easily switch between analyzing different currency pairs you're, because you're not that invested into um, the knowledge base of a certain currency pair. You don't have to look up economic events about it. You don't have to know who the key spokespeople are for that country and um, interest rates and so on. It's very easy to switch between charts and takes a minimal amount of uh, time to adjust yourself to a new currency pair and therefore you have the luxury of trading a much more diverse portfolio of currencies when you're using technical analysis. Sentiment analysis. So personally I think that sentiment analysis is valuable but at the same time it's uh, not substantial enough to be a standalone type of analysis that you can base uh, your forex decisions on. I think sentiment analysis is more of an auxiliary type of analysis that you can and you probably should add to your own analysis to um, make it more robust. So sentiment analysis implies trying to assess and understand the general mood in the market, what traders are thinking, what, what their um, expectations are. And a good starting point for that is Twitter and Facebook. So you can go on Twitter, search a currency pair and see what people are uh, thinking, what they're talking about, what uh, they're kind of expecting. And uh, also you can uh, find that out uh, on Facebook in certain groups, in certain circles, um, other social networks like Google+, Plus, basically any type of social network, including forums. Why it's important? Well, because at the end of the day, people make transactions in the market and it matters what people think, especially when uh, it's a lot of people thinking up. You know how ideas can be viral sometimes and uh, something can pick up out of nothing like somebody says the euro is going up and, and then just spreads very quickly across Twitter and everybody starts feeling that way and then you know in a matter of uh, an hour or so you, see, you actually see the euro going up once again does it is rare that just purely sentiment and sentiment drives the market but it's good to assess it and uh, keep it in the back of your mind also uh, sentiment is uh, reflected Often in uh, currency pairs, you'll be you'll eventually learn how to pick it up from the charts. Some types of sentiment, uh, for instance, a good one is uh, when traders are uncertain and they're nervous. You'll see consolidation on the chart, um, so the price amplitude will be uh, reducing substantially. And moreover, we'll actually witness some of these situations in our live trading on a real account in the further sections of this course. Hello, this is Kirill from forexboat.com and welcome back to the course on forex trading. In this section, we will be talking about technical analysis and in particular, I will provide you with your technical analysis arsenal, a comprehensive base of technical analysis skills and tools that will help you cover most of the trading situations you will find yourself in. Before we proceed, I would like to underline that whatever we talk about in this section are my views and all of this is derived from my personal experience of trading. The other tutorials and courses that you might find on the internet, they might have different views and a different variety of skills and techniques uh, to use in the Forex market and that's uh, totally fine. You're more than welcome to in your free time to explore additional skills. However, what I provide you is um, in my view the most important things that will help you in most cases. And to start off with, I would like to quote the Pareto principle, which states that 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. And this can be applied to things like 80% of peas are usually contained in 20% of the pods in a garden, 80% of sales of uh, a lot of companies come from 20% of their clients, 80% of work can be done in 20% of the time. That's the Pareto principle. and uh, it applies in lots and lots of um, situations in life and I personally believe it also applies in technical analysis and it's not a coincidence that I call this uh, section um, technical analysis arsenal because there's a limited number of um, skills and techniques that you need to know to cover most of the situations you'll come across and I believe that the techniques that I'm going to cover in this section are about maybe 20% of the techniques that uh, you can find out there as a starting out trader um, and they will cover 80% of the situations that will come across and you'll see that in our live trading. We will, be, uh, we will limit ourselves to these 20 um, 
percent of techniques and we'll uh, be able to trade in most of the cases and so uh, a lot of courses and a lot of books get technical analysis make it seem very complicated and confusing and i i want to avoid that in this course we will look at a limited number of the most efficient most powerful techniques and that way they will seem simple and they are simple and they will cover most of your training um, let's uh, sum up in three bullet points what we're going to cover in this section we'll cover um, techniques and skills that will get you through 80 percent of situations on the forex market and that doesn't mean that you won't know what to do in the other cases it just means that you won't have to trade in other cases and you'll find the right situations for these skills and techniques it doesn't not at all it doesn't mean that you will um, have any difficulties or trouble that just means that you will trade when you find these techniques to be working on the market um, we will make everything very simple broken down into extremely intuitive steps that's the way it should be some uh, technical analysis is simple in its nature and everything should be clear everything will be clear in this uh, section because it is important to understand um, the principles and how they apply there can't be any gray areas it ha technical analysis has to allow you to create a strict trading strategy which will tell you whether to enter the market or not to enter the market so those are the three things that we'll be aiming for and um, that's what you will um, get from this uh, section trends and flats so one of the most common uh, themes on the forex market is a trend let's uh, try to understand what a trend is exactly for example this is how the price has been moving um, over a certain period of time then as you can see here we can uh, draw a diagonal line underneath the price which uh, the price seems to be bouncing off this line is called the support line it indicates an upward trend it means that the price is bouncing off upwards of this line and continuing its uh, upward movement and so what you can expect in a situation like this is that the price will uh, once again come close to the line and bounce off it and keep moving upwards and that's how you use the support line so if you notice that the price has bounced off a diagonal line a couple of times in a row uh, then there is a, a good chance that it will bounce off uh, the support line one more time at least one more time and uh, that's how uh, uh, traders using technical analysis would enter into a uh, buy order a downward trend uh, is uh, very similar but it's just uh, happening in the opposite direction so here we can draw a red line above the price and which is kind of not letting the price go up which is forcing the price to go down and this price um, this line therefore is called a resistance line and once again here you can expect uh, that the price um, will go towards the line and there's a uh, high chance that the price will bounce off the line again and continue its movement downwards so this is called a downward trend and the line is called a resistance line and the third type of market is a flat market um, and this uh, in this case uh, we can't uh, draw a um, support line or resistance line because the market is kind of flat it's moving um, sideways some people call a flat market uh, a sideways trend I kind of try to stay away from that um, definition because um, there is actually no trend in the market so why bother calling it a sideways trend finally uh, in regards to trends it's always important to check the overall trend on the market so if um, the euro dollar is going down then uh, whatever your other technical analysis suggests it's always more favorable to trade downwards uh, if uh, the British pound dollar is going up uh, overall then uh, you would favor more the signals that tell you to trend, uh, trade upwards so it's called trading with the trend and you'll notice that we will be doing that in our live real forex trading in this course